Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 126 where you send your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net that's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net and I'll do my best to answer them. Let's get right to it. This one's first one's called Guide. Mark, I have recently started checking into Flat Earth recently. <laughs> Okay, twice, that's fine. Because I am one of those guys who think they are totally open-minded, but heard about it a few years ago and laughed like how they could lie to us. As I read about 9-11, JFK, Rothschilds, etc., I realized they had been lying to us for a very long time. So your Flat Earth Clues was the one that got me hooked. Wondering if you had any kind of guide or basically more info. Like a Flat Earth Clues guide? Hmm. I also had a question regarding the North Pole, and is it blocked off like the Outer Edge? Yeah, very, very possibly. North Poles, there's some strange stuff happening up there too, although not as large, obviously, as the Outer Rim, but interesting. Uh, and any speculations on what they found there? Yeah, uh, the center of the world, for lack of a better term, sure. I mean, is it a magnetic mountain? Are the waters flowing through it? Is, you know, the, the fountain of this system, you know? The, the core mechanism, is that up there? Yeah, very possible. Anyway, thanks, Mario Reyes. I don't know about a guide. I'll, I'll send him a link to a few things, though. All right, moving on. This one's called Behind the Curve. Hey, Mark, I just watched Behind the Curve video on Netflix. On your eclipse experiment, why wouldn't the high-altitude camera be useful as a proof? If the Earth is indeed flat, wouldn't the total eclipse observation only occur when the sun and the moon are directly perpendicular to the Earth's surface? It should be impossible to photograph the total eclipse off axis. Don't mind the phone, by the way. I'm not answering that. Uh, I also find it interesting that the eclipse moves west to east and the umbra is only 80 miles wide. Haven't we been told that the sun's rays come in roughly parallel given the way the seasons are explained by the tilt of the Earth's axis? Yeah, uh, this treats the sun as a point light source. Yeah, 93 million miles away. In that case, the moon's shadow would be slightly larger than the moon's actual diameter. Yes, absolutely right. That's one of my five big points. I do the calculations myself, but I'm too ill to think clearly right now. Hmm. No, I don't drink. I'm just very old and very ill. Yeah, I wouldn't have really assumed that somebody saying ill, they were, they had, were drunk, uh, not to be confused with You Be Illin by Run DMC. That was back in the mid-80s, if you guys are old enough to remember that. Uh, right or wrong, I applaud your critical thinking. We have nearly lost that ability, I fear. Just FYI, we live in a bounded yet infinite in universe. Infinity in a jar, as one of my teachers referred to it as. It clearly explains why the Big Bang is fallacy and eliminates the introduction of fudge factors. <laughs> Fudge factors, such as dark matter, dark energy, and even dark Pokemon. Oh, I see what you did there. That's funny. Uh, you know, I may steal that. Uh, check out the Mandelbrot equation set and the view from within a Klein bottle. Food for thought. Yeah, I know full well about Mandelbrot. As a matter of fact, I, I like to describe the uh, the projection system as um, uh, Mandelbrot resolution. If you guys don't know what that means. You guys have all seen it. You just don't know what the name is. Uh, look it up if you get a chance. Uh, yeah, as far as the eclipse experiment, high altitude camera would be useful. And there have been people that have photographed stuff with a high altitude balloon during an eclipse, although it still doesn't take into, into account the fact that it's still a projection. So anyway, but thanks for that. It's good. That was from, uh, I'm sorry, Randy Rhodes. Great name. This one's called Thank You. Also from a Randy, but different. Uh, it's from Randy Fine, who did the Arkansas meetup. This would not have been possible without you. The Flat Earth Army marches on. And, uh, yeah, apologize to Randy that, uh, I, I, I said I hadn't, yeah, I hadn't seen this, the, 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 the pixie sent because I hadn't gone through my emails yet. And so this was a single shot of Rob Skiba at one of the Arkansas meetups. And there's a lot of people there. They absolutely took over that restaurant. So very, very cool and uh, great to see everybody. I'm glad Rob had fun. And uh, Rob, if you're listening, much love to you. So thank you, Randy Fine, for that. This one's called, you're not going to believe this. Please let me know what you think. Mark, our eyes concept 
everything upside down. They flip everything. So everything is not flying upward. It's falling downward. I can't believe it. That's from Jessica Anderson. Jessica, you're going to have to give me more than that. I, I don't I don't know what you mean there. Don't know where you're going. But, uh, but thank you at least for the enthusiasm. There was a lot of ex exclamation points there. This one's called Flat Earth. Hello, Mark. I saw your documentary on Netflix, and I want to know if you... I love the fact, by the way, that people are saying that it's my documentary. Oh, yeah, I directed, produced, starred. It, basically a Billy Bob Thornton uh, sling blade type of thing, where it was it was all mine. The, the other people were just putting them out in front of the cameras for interviews. Uh, Daniel Clark and Caroline Clark. Not married, by the way. Uh, and Nick Andrew, all those guys, and, and all the, the other producers. Yeah, it's totally mine. No, it wasn't. They just called me. And, and shot me and ended up making me the um, the protagonist in this. So that'd be the good guy if you don't know literary terms. Okay, move, moving on. Sorry. Uh, saw your documentary on Netflix. Wanted to know if you have thought about raising money for an expedition to see the ice fall. Have you thought to sail to the end of the earth? If you truly believe the flatter theory, then wouldn't that be absolute proof you are right? Sincerely, Carl S. Uh, no, because there is no end of the earth. <clears throat> Not that we can get to the Antarctic coastline is just the Antarctic coastline. Yes, it's controlled by the military and nobody gets to go out to the Antarctic without extreme supervision. Uh, but uh, remember, uh, Admiral Byrd, Navy Admiral, uh, spent 30 years, the better part of his life, all the way up until his death in 1957, flying around Antarctica, looking for the edge, and only found it towards the end. So the average person isn't going to be able to get anywhere close. Sorry to say, uh, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't you shouldn't try. I suppose, uh, but you're, the permit. You know, again, if anyone wants a copy, I shouldn't probably make this available. But wait, wait, do I still have it on this machine? Because I had a hard drive crash. Uh, the Antarctic Treaty. Just look it up. 1959. Uh, look all the details involved. It is very difficult to do anything uh, exploratory in Antarctica. Anyway, moving on. This one's called Behind the Curve, Netflix. Badass, bro. A lot of exclamation points there. Thank you. And that's from James Campbell. Yeah. Again, it was fun to do. And we, it's so weird, the, the Netflix market share. Because we were, as you know, I mean, it was released back in November. And I've been seeing it in film festivals since April of last year, of 2018. And who I did not have any idea that Netflix had such a massive market share when it came to uh, movies, because or especially documentaries, uh, because it was on uh, iTunes and Google Play and Amazon Prime, no slouch there, and YouTube movies. And Netflix blew all of them away. All the other, the big four combined, just blew them away. And so when it came out now, I'm just getting ton. My, literally, my email load doubled within a week. Uh, let's see. This one's called questions about flat earth. Mark, you are the only major mo motion. You use the only major motion picture of the moon missions being Apollo 13 as evidence of faking of the moon landings. I ask you why, why is that the only one I propose an answer? There was no drama in the rest. Oh, Apollo. Okay. Important. If you skip the rest of this email, please read the paragraph before the two after my name. Okay, you're basically saying don't use his name as those are the most important to me. The rest are supporting arguments to my perception of reality in regards to the question posed in this email. This is like a disclaimer. The section after my name is about the next question that I will be asking so that you will not be surprised. There are also, is also a little background about my knowledge of history. You know, I'm just going to read the whole thing, dude. Our news is driven by drama. Our movies are driven by drama. Our television is driven by drama. That's absolutely true. Drama is the key here. Would you watch a movie or television show about a routine medical procedure? I doubt it. There are no TV shows where the doctors perform procedure after procedure and test after test that is uneventful and routine. Is this evidence that all medical procedures are fraught with danger and death? That the life of a nurse or doctor is filled with patients flatlining on the table only to, only to be revived at the last second? No, my mother is a nurse and has been for over 37 years. She can count on one hand the number of times where there has been a compl complication. I know because each time she comes home in tears. When I was a thousand miles away, she would call me and talk about it and I could hear the tears in her voice. So I ask you, why is the only movie about a moon mission being about the most dramatic event in the history of NASA? 
uh, evidence of missions being fakes. I say that it is simply that people want to watch drama and excitement. People on the verge of death, holding on for dear life and practically praying to make it home to see their families one last time. And I will not say his name. Uh, I have many more questions, but as you can see, I get wordy, so I'll keep it to one or two per email. I will not get angry or become a troll. I'm an intellectual and enjoy learning. If your answers are clear and contain verifiable facts, I will continue to converse with you about the flat earth. Wow, he sounds like a freaking robot. Uh, I am not a believer as the ancient Greeks were able to calculate the size of the earth using geometry over 2000 years ago. And w I will respond to that saying, look, math will not save you. <laughs> it will not. And here's why. Yes. Does geometry get you close? Absolutely. It does. Right. But sticks and shadows is relative. Everybody knows that. Plus here, here's the big one here. That is until you get high enough to actually see the earth as it really is. What do you really know? And you, and you, uh, what, what reference should I use here? How about the coconut reference? That's a good one. And that is until you actually crack open the coconut, what's inside it? You don't really know. You can speculate all day long and use math all day long and knock on it and measure the echoes and the sounds and, you know, do all sorts of fun geometry on it. But until you open it, you don't know. Same thing. I know it's a, not the greatest analogy in the world, but same thing with the globe. Until you get high enough, you haven't seen it. And so it's still just a guess. And yet they were preaching it as absolute fact for the better part of 500 years. And by the way, don't tell me that the Greeks uh, proved that it was a globe 2,000 years ago. It's called the Copernican model. And that was only 500 years ago. And, and if you say, oh, no, it's the, it's the Greeks, well, then fine. We'll go to the library and burn all the books by Copernicus. All right, this one's called, oh, I'm sorry, he hands this with, uh, my next question would be about the seasons. Why is the length of a day and the temperature changes so dramatically? I have never heard of a flat earther explain it properly. Oh, properly to who? Later, I will get into political aspects of the Cold War and why the USSR would assist their sworn enemies in the continuation of the conspiracy instead of using it to discredit them and win the political public side of the war. No, no, sorry, not going to go with you there either. The Russians were with us the entire time. The Russians are and have been. I don't care. Who, who disagrees with me? I know, you know, staunch Republicans are going to go against me on this. And that is Russia has never, I'm sorry, the Soviet Union, let's go with the Soviet Union because that's what it really is, has never been our enemy. Never, ever, ever. We've never squared off against them. It's always just been posturing for decades. And that is the space race and the arms race and everything. You want to look into it further, go ahead. But show me an instance where the United States and the Soviet Union have been going just straight up battling. We've talked about it forever. We've never done it. Why not? There's only so long you can you can play that record. So again, Kevin, I'm sorry that you don't believe in the flat earth, but it takes a while for some people. And again, if you call yourself an intellectual, it's going to be more difficult. In fact, if you have a master's degree in anything, especially a physical science, it's going to be almost impossible. Uh, and you can send me more emails. No, I'll probably read some of them. Uh, but no, you, you're not going to get anywhere with me here. Sorry. Moving on. This one's called questions. Flat earth. I'm serious. <laughs> I, I, why, why would you not be serious? Hello, Mark. My name is William Previti or Previti. No, it's Previti. And I'm a sophomore at a high school in Philadelphia. This email has nothing to do with school, but more with discussion. I want to learn more about what your beliefs are when it comes to the flat earth. I am not looking to laugh, but I am looking for knowledge. I am genuinely curious about the topic and looking for someone to enlighten me on the consensus of the flat earth society. What is it that you believe in? I am interested in intellectual discussion about the topic and looking forward to hearing back from you. Thanks, William. Did I write him back? Yeah, I did write him back. I said, yeah, whatever questions you got, whatever you want to do. You just let me know. I am more than willing to talk to anyone, including young people. I know that one guy on YouTube and, and the director is like, no, we, you can't talk to young people. It's like, why? There's there's no age restriction on flat earth. We can talk about whatever we want. Better that they're with us than with you, science. Uh, this one's called Dome Over Us. Hello, Mark. I've been looking into the flat earth theory for about a year now, and there are some several, there are some, well, several things I am unclear on. Perhaps you can give me some information 
to clarify, with a dome over the Earth, the air is a pressurized system. Yes. The air is 14.7 PSI at sea level, apparently. Does this hold true all the way up to the dome? No. Is there a gradient, or is that just another of the lies to hide the truth? No, there would be some sort of gradient. Because you remember, um, it's no different than, than water. We're breathing in basically a thin version of water. Uh, if water is H2O, then we are breathing in N4O. Um, everybody knows that you know you can compress water a little bit. Not a ton, but you can compress it. Uh, you know, water pressure. Uh, you know, when you go down to the bottom of, of any body of water, you know, the water sits on top of water, which sits on top of water, and it can get pressed down there. Uh, so you can do the same thing with air. Sure. Compressed air, you can do it. So it's going to be a little thinner up there. And we know this because uh, when you go, even when you climb a mountain upwards of 20,000 feet, uh, it is, uh, it, air gets thinner and the oxygen content gets a lot less, uh, to where you need oxygen tanks. And if you try to open a window at, at an airplane, at an airplane, on an airplane at even 30,000 feet, uh, the, the pressure difference is going to suck you right out. Anyway, sorry. Uh, with the dome of the earth, the air is okay. Um, is there a gradient or is another lies to hide the truth? No, absolutely a gradient. What makes a thing fall down? I mean, down is downwards, obviously, but why? I know the mainstream explanation is gravity, but no one knows what that really is. I won't ask too much now as I'm sure you get a lot of this. So thanks in advance. That's from Steve Smith. Uh, yeah, I still believe in a form of gravity, uh, a molecular magnet that pulls things down. I do. Is it combined with some sort of form of density? Yeah, sure. Because again, we live in a pressurized system. So between the two works just great. And again, gravity for me on a flat earth is very little, uh, has very little difference between gravity on a globe. Gravity on a globe pulls things at a slight angle towards the center of a ball and gravity in my model just pulls things straight down. Pretty, pretty simple. Moving on. This one's called Flat Earth, and he spelled Earth wrong. Hi, Mark Sargent. I am Antonio Rodriguez. I don't know how to speak speak English well with one L. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. I have a question. If the Earth is flat, why are there earthquakes? Because if the Earth is flat, could there could be no earthquakes? And in the event that there are maybe earthquakes, if a gap is created, ocean ridge, would not the planet split? Thanks for your attention, Antonio Rodriguez Gambero. I, no, plate tectonics work just fine on a, on a flat model. It's, it's just they aren't wrapped around a globe. There's so many systems that work just fine on a flat model. Uh, you don't need a globe to do plate tectonics. You can you can do it on a flat surface as well. As a matter of fact, when we're explaining plate, te plate tectonics to people, we're usually doing it on a flat map. It's, it's, it's easy enough to do. You just stretch it out on a flat map. Can be done. Not hard. Open your mind. You'll be fine. <laughs> what was Jaren's thing? Open your mind. There's truth inside. <laughs> uh, cracks me up. Uh, radio request. Um, hi, Mark. I'm ta contacting you to inquire about having you as a guest on uh, Adobe Radio's Blackout with Samantha Scarlett to talk about Flat Earth. I'm also interested in screening behind the curve or any other Flat Earth documentary you might have at a paranormal themed film festival that I'm organizing here in New York City for late spring, early summer. Uh, regarding blackout, episodes are pre-taped via Skype or by phone uh, and air Friday nights. Yeah, and I and I missed it yesterday, unfortunately. I, I, so you guys aren't going to see it till at least next Friday. And, and Although I may record it earlier than that. And um, she's booking people through March. So I am going to be doing that with Samantha Scarlett, hopefully. Um, all right, moving on. Uh, this one's called Flat Earth Worker. Mark, between so many profiles that I saw last month, I chose yours because I'm a flat earth minded also. Yeah, this English is not his first language. Uh, I hope you can coach me and help me out with our dream due to your great ex experience. I'm Andre and my wife, Anna, general physician. We are Colombians. We got married last November 10th and our dream is to begin a family in Canada. Wait, this is flat earth, right? Yeah, it is flat earth. Uh, I know in the beginning, he's just telling me his life story. In the beginning, it would be difficult to work out our fields, but we just need a job opportunity to make a fresh start. Let me introduce myself. And he gives his uh, resume. And then what? Uh, I love teaching and watching movies. <laughs> it feels like a, a you know, match.com type thing. 
uh, as long as I'm well accompanied eating whole bags of peanuts and popcorn. <laughs> okay. I cannot live without the gastro gastronomic delights of my land, like the stew with a lot of meat beans. I love cake with milk. <laughs> I actually may have to try cake with milk now. I love to play with the... Uh, okay, where is this going? I love to play with the odds to design and implement crazy things in companies, but normally I do not. I hate the agua panela, but if it's the only thing I have after dinner, I'll take it so I do not get stuck. I, my frustrated dream is to be a car driver, but I simulate it playing Xbox. <laughs> oh my competitive athlete all my life i love photography and travel about all things i collect toys and i like playing dogs and cats and that's the end of the email what i have never gotten i mean you get a lot of you know stuff from african banks and and things here and there but this is completely new and he titled it flat earth worker is he trying to is he trying to work in the United States, but but he says Canada. Dream is to begin a family in Canada. Why is he appealing to me? I mean, even let, let, let's say I just went along with this and and I had the means and and the effort to take him and his wife and make them American citizens. Uh, then he'd have to be a Canadian citizen, and then he gives me all his info down below. That is such a weird email. That's awesome. <laughs> I don't know what to make of that. That's that's really good. Okay, <clears throat> this one's called Podcast. Hi, I'm Mark Sargent. I am a student in a school in Perth, Western Australia. Oh, good. More young people. And my friends and I were just wondering if we could interview you for about 15, 20 minutes this Friday morning, uh, Australian time, which would be Thursday, my time, uh, about your flatter theory. Our podcast is called The Halftime Show. And we have only just started, so a famous guest like you would really give us a jump start. Please get to me soon if you're interested. We can conduct the interview through Skype or Discord. Kind regards, Madhav. Great. Happy to do it. Super, super great. Uh, so, yeah, if anyone wants me to do, you know, you're trying out a new podcast, happy to do it. Especially kids. I know it sounds bad, but come on. You know what I mean. All right. This one's called Interview. Wow. Another one. Uh, hi, Mark. We're a group of high school students. What is with the high school students right now? Uh, from Chief South International High School located in West Seattle. I, I know this high school uh, because Seattle was named after Chief South. S-E-A-L-T-H. And they just made it and turned it in Seattle. Uh, we're making a student documentary about the Flyer Theory. We'd love to interview you if possible. We want to hear your perspective and include it in our film. If you're interested, we're fairly flexible in ways we could meet, whether it be in person via or, or via Skype. Thank you for your time. And <clears throat> yeah, right on all over that. Uh, and and um, I think we're going to do it via Skype because they already wrote back. This one's called Hello. Hello, Mark. I am watching your documentary from you on Netflix. I just like to say hello to you. By the way, I thought you were younger. <laughs> oh, God. I'm just getting hit with them today. Ah, oh, Netflix. I hate you. You've changed everything. So, uh, yeah. I, I've, I've, I've actually had this voice uh, since I was how about uh, 14, roughly? 13, 14? And uh, nobody really told me. I was never encouraged to go into broadcasting, never encouraged to um, to do anything in the arts for whatever reason. I, it was a small school and, and who knows, maybe. It, um, and, and girlfriends would keep me on the phone for a long time and they wouldn't tell me. It was only way later when I was in my 20s that uh, a, a, a girlfriend fessed up to me why she kept me on the phone for, for so long. And it's like, wow, it would have been nice to know. Although, you know, maybe it kept me humble. I guess. So, cool. Thank you. And that's from Osman. This one's called Hacked from Satellite. Mark, received from our contact in NASA, we're working to obtain more regions. Keep this to yourself. Okay. Is it a funny, funny thing? 
Let me download. Yeah, it was just a PDF file that uh, that I've seen before. The the flattened state when they when you're at when NASA is requesting uh, plane specs for or having contractors build planes for them. You have to build it like the plane is going over a flat stationary Earth, which is interesting. Uh, this one's called Flat Earth FAQs. Dear Mark Sergeant, Flat Earther in Chief. Uh, again, I don't know about that. I saw the documentary Behind the Curve on Netflix this week, and I wanted to say I was utterly convinced the Earth is flat, man. Anyway, the reason I'm writing to you is because I've recommended the documentary to some colleagues at work, Karen and Tracy. <laughs> I don't know if you should name them. They watched it, and they're kind of on the fence, so I was hoping you could teach me how to articulate the moon landing theory to Karen and Tracy to convince them once and for all. That'd be an extra two subscribers to your YouTube channel, by the way. Uh, they might be in their late 50s, but they know YouTube. What, what I'm 50 now, guys. I, I was 46 when I started this, but I am 50 now, and I know you too. Keep up the good work, and I look forward to hearing from you. <laughs> it sounds so bad, as you late 50s. Oh, I heard of the YouTubes. <laughs> uh, keep up the good work, and I look forward to hearing from you or a fellow Flat Earth Grunt. Flat Earth Grunt? Who manages your emails? <laughs> I don't have an assistant yet. I may, eventually, but I don't now. Flat regards, Joshua. Oh, P.S. Please pass on my flat regards to Patricia Steer. Where can I purchase a Mark Sargent t-shirt? We is all Mark Sargent. <laughs> Hashtag NASA lies. Uh, yeah, if anyone wants uh, 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 I am Mark Sargent t-shirt that was in the documentary, by all means, uh, you can... I don't make any money off them, but you can get it from the Peanut Gallery store or his daughter's store. Just go into the descri description box of any video that I make on YouTube and but I don't know quarter of the way down you'll see a link to the uh, the t-shirt shop so have fun with that this one is called round earth conspiracy question hey mark me and some friends watched the Netflix documentary okay and we were very interested in what you had to say it got us talking one thing that we wondered uh, that didn't seem to be addressed by the documentary is that the underlying purpose behind the round earth conspiracy uh power and control that's the short version in other words who benefits uh the elite uh, people with bank accounts that, that really the numbers have no meaning uh why do they want us to think the world is round again power and control you can't be the ultimate authority on this world unless you're the ultimate authority Kind of get what I mean there. Uh, kind of like the Air Force and UFOs, which is uh, the biggest reason why the Air Force will not admit categorically that they, there are UFOs. Is the UFOs are better than us. They are better than any aircraft we've ever built. Even our hybrid stuff that we've been doing, even the Aurora project, it's better than that. I mean, yeah, the Aurora is fast, but it doesn't have the maneuverability that these things do. These things run off a unified field engine, which basically can accelerate instantly to max speed in any direction and change directions instantly which of course you know in in our reality uh, of aerodynamics would destroy our pilots because g-forces uh, would would just tear them to shreds i'm sorry what do they gain by convincing yeah i checked out your youtube channel hoping to find an answer and i'm a bit overwhelmed by the vol volume of info there yeah there's 1300 videos on that channel now you could spend the next year going through my my uh, videos and never finish them. Can you direct me to a video where you discuss this question or offer your thoughts? Thanks, Chris. And yes, I did respond to him. So he's on the right path. This one's called Flat Earth. Mark, whether the Earth is flat or round, what would change in your life? How about everything? Oh, this is one of those guys. Uh, you live, you die. <laughs> Flat or round, you have the same outcome. Mm, yeah, unless it's flat, and then it wouldn't be. But that's okay. I, I, we're going to go with this. And you never hear round earth believers bla bashing flat earth believers. Oh, <laughs> oh, he obviously has not been in this long because round earth believers come after us all day long. But you and your female sidekick from Houston. Sidekick? She's not a sidekick. She's a Disney queen. An independent entity, which you never want to give a magic wand to. Ever. Seriously, don't ever, if anyone thinking about giving her a magic wand, don't do it. Uh, don't remember her name? Oh, come on. It's Patricia Steer. S-T-E-E-R-E. -E -E. Sorry, she's so ins <laughs> inconsequential. Oh, I'm finishing this email. She's so inconsequential and unimportant. Well, then why are you bringing her up? That I couldn't pick her name out of a group of three. Uh-huh. Bash all round earth people. Uh, aren't we all just humankind? Yes, we are. That's the point. Round or... or flat we shouldn't bash each other well it's human nature 
Uh, Envy is one of the seven, after all. But you and what's-her-name, wow, you really do not like Patricia. I know, I know. She's ridiculously attractive. Uh, again, remember, also, by the way, you know, look in the mirror, you, what's her, what's her name? Mark Turner. Um, and then remember, figure out how old you are. It might, might take you a minute. And then realize she's 56 and she looks like this. In fact, I, I have joked with her several times that she could be dead on a slab in a morgue for three days and look better than 90-something percent of the population walking around. But that's okay. That's okay. You, you want to hide your jealousy by keep saying that you don't know her name. That's fine. Uh, but you and what's-her-name call NASA the enemy. They are. Where's the added value? I don't even understand that question. They are the enemy. Uh, as a field, oh, here we go. As a field engineer for the Goodrich Corporation, I traveled globally often. No, you didn't. You traveled across the plane. Flew from LA to Incheon, South Korea, still west to Delhi, India, northwest to Heathrow, and back to LA. Could that be done on a pizza crust plant? Yeah, it could. It's you just move your finger around the pizza. When you move your pizza, your finger around the pizza, does that mean you circumnavigated it? Yes, it does. Does that mean that pizza is a globe? No, it does not. Watching the air show feature when you fly to see where you're at is fun. And the westwardly heading over uh, never varied by more than a few degrees. How on a flat earth? Again, the GPS system is telling you what it wants to tell you. How you were not figuring this out. I, the, the, the GPS system on the plane is a military system. It is tied directly to the United States Department of Defense system. We invented it. It will tell you exactly where, what it wants to tell you. Oh, here it goes. You will die one day, as we all will, and the earth will still be the earth, flat or round. It'll be flat, but it's okay. It won't make one bit of... Man, he is struggling. Struggling with this uh it won't make one bit of difference in anyone's life what the shape of our world is and i wouldn't call 19 million or so followers a success when the planet has 7 billion people on it uh find me something else that has 19 million followers that should be ridiculous why is there one follower there's a lot more than 19 million men hate to break it to you and one question that a bunch of my friends and i would like to know uh-huh uh-huh and I'm not even going to answer that question. So there you go. That's from Mark Turner. And if you want to email Mark, his email address is m40marke at yahoo.com. Thanks for sending. This one's called Question Everything. Hi, Mark. I hope you made it home safely from the conference. I will say the conference was very different from what I expected. A bit of a fringe Christian conference. Can't remember if I asked you this before, but how do flat earth beliefs and Christianity meld together? Does the Christian element base their flat earth beliefs uh, just on scriptures or is there more to it? Thanks, uh, Doree Smith. And yeah, so uh, it, look, at least half of, at least what I've seen in the United States, half of the uh, flat earth army is made up by strong strong christians and of course the, the the bulk of it is going to come from the bible because the bible is uh, a flat earth text more than anything i mean there's only one verse in the entire bible that even hints towards the globe and that's a hint which is isaiah 40 22 he who sitteth upon the circle of the earth and remember uh when it comes to the english language or any language. Circle is not ball. Circle is not globe. Circle is not sphere. Circle is circle. Your dinner plate is circular. The dining room table is circular. So, uh, but you combine that. Yes, the Christian community also grabs what they can from uh, science, secular knowledge. And they, they mesh the two. And it has created a very powerful belief. So, uh, but yeah, uh, the, quite a few conferences how, there, there is a Christian element to them, no question. And, and there's nothing, there's not, it's really difficult to separate the two. And so I embrace it. It's like, look, I was raised born again Christian. I got no problem with it. Um, if you have, if you're from another religion, yeah, you're, you're going to have to, you're going to have to deal with that. But yeah, you're absolutely right. <clears throat> this one's called the throne of God. Hello, Mark. My husband and I are excited to see Dale's paper. Are you sending it out to those who desire to see? This is a jaw-dropping jaw information. Thank you in advance, Sharon Toko. 
uh, yeah, if someone wants the, the paper that was written by the air traffic controller that I had as a guest on the show, uh, kind of his condensed version of the theory of everything. And it's not light reading, guys, just to let you know. Uh, I'm more than happy to send it to you. The paper's called Harmony, and I will just shoot it through to you through an email. All you have to do is email me and say, hey, I want the paper. This one's called Flat Earth. Hi, Mark, my friend who is a flat earther, told me to watch behind the curve, and I have a few questions I was wondering if you could answer. First off, with the flight patterns that you addressed at the beginning of the documentary, I once traveled from Brisbane, Australia, to Christchurch, New Zealand, which is traveling south, which took two hours, and it takes three hours to travel from Perth to Brisbane. So my question is that the flat earth model you showed is actually how the work. Shouldn't it take longer to fly to New Zealand from Brisbane? Yeah, potentially, yes. And again, there's something going on with the AE map that we can't explain. Absolutely. No question. The next question is, why did two decide to add what? It's all right. I'm not going to pick on them too much. To add the 15 degrees experiment, as to me, it shows that you prove that the Earth is moving. Uh, okay. First off, I did not direct or produce or do anything other than be a subject in the documentary. Uh, everything that was done with Bob was done with Bob. Everything that was done with Jaron was done with Jaron. I wasn't even there for Bob's shoot or for Jaron's part. Uh, and to me, it would be more obvious that the world was flat because wouldn't more ships and planes have hit the edge of the world or the Game of Thrones style wall of ice? No, you just don't let planes out there. I'm also not sure you explained how the eclipse could occur if the earth was flat. Well, no, I did explain it. They cut it out. The, remember, they had to whittle it down to about 100 minutes, 99 minutes if, if I'm... I had to check the numbers. I'm pretty sure it's 99 minutes. And they, they added out. And we shot, oh, God, days and days and days and days of footage. So, no. Oops, sorry. Hang on. Every once in a while, my email just goes back one screen. I, I don't know why. It's like time's out. Uh, additionally, when you Google Earth from space, oh, here we go. You see the Earth from many different angles. So are all of these images fake? No, they're not fake. They're stitched together on a globe. And the person that you say began the flat earth theory or was it the first to have a voice on this topic as later portrayed to seem crazy as he makes ludicrous ac accusations against you and Patricia. I say this guy didn't remember Patricia's name. So if he had a major part in the beginning of the flat earth society, but he's crazy, doesn't that discredit the entire theory? <clears throat> no, no. As a matter of fact, uh, Matt, Matt just held on too tight to everything. And most of it's just jealousy anything else uh yeah he had some interesting insights on the flat earth but it was it was very one-dimensional and that was photo or painting he specializes in painting and that's that was his thing uh plus he was told about flat earth he didn't learn about it or research it on his own he was just told about it and like a lot of people and uh, him lashing out he, they they had to make a villain for the film and none of the scientists or psychiatrists would do anything but smile for the camera and, and say things behind um, bright teeth. And that was not Matt. So they, Matt was, honestly, Matt was a good choice to be the villain. He was. He, he was yelling a lot, screaming, you know, waving his arms around. Uh, and just about every producer I ever talked to said the same thing. It's like, oh, we Matt will always be some part of this because he is interesting to watch on camera. Uh, however, I do respect that you added the opinions of those who oppose as as... You as scientists and governments would never have done the same. Thanks so much. That's from Caitlin. Yeah, again, I had nothing to do with the editing of the film. And I didn't even know who the people that they talked to as far as Scott Kelly and the scientists and the psychiatrist and so on and so on. I had, I had nothing to do with that. It was good that they got them because it, it gives a, a balanced look at the flat earth community. And it makes it, it it's, it's, again, it's a Trojan horse in my opinion where it gets the globalists to look at a topic they never would have looked at and makes them feel safe and not freaking out. And by the time they're halfway in it, it's like, wow, I got to finish this thing. Moving on. <clears throat> this one's called Extreme. Oh, it's from Extreme Health Radio. Yeah, he took so long to respond to that email. Ever, ever write somebody? I wrote him October 17th, 2018, and uh, he didn't write back until uh, February. And probably because of the Netflix thing. Oh, so many emails coming in. I've got four more since I started this. That's so great. Uh, this one's part of the $100,000 challenge. And, and it is a series of emails between Raymond Goodwin and Glenn Williamson. I'm not going to read all of that. There's just pages and pages and pages. Those two guys are debating. Uh, Raymond Goodwin was one of my subject matter experts. He was a surveyor, career surveyor of 30 years. Um, 
a planar surveyor and like most surveyors and uh, he was the one that said look all projects are on a flat stationary earth that is the very definition of a planar surveyor and so he's arguing with anybody that, that, that wants and uh, best of luck to him this one's called the magic show mark you almost had me i was intrigued but then you showed that you didn't understand gps and how those plane finder apps work okay here we go true an aircraft uses gps to triangulate its location does it because uh, I think it uses the old Loran system, which was ground-based, and they just slapped another sticker on it, said there were satellites. It also uses something called the inertial reference system. Mm -hmm. The aircraft then reports that location via a land-based system called an ADSB. You're not helping. Uh, line of sight radio communication only works for a couple of hundred miles offshore. Again, not helping your point. You already found this out, though, didn't you, when you thought planes were disappearing? I'm not saying they're disappearing. I'm saying they're not being tracked when their GPS was turned off. So when the aircraft passes this threshold, it loses contact with the ground-based ADS-B station. Again, you're making my point here. I can't be the only person to have alerted you to this. Uh, so I assume you're uh, all away. Uh, you're away already. Either way, I think this clue should be updated, as it can be disproved. Really, because nobody's disproved it. It's four years old now. Nobody shot it down. You should make a video on this. See if you can you can kill it. Any instead, why not talk more about those few flights that you seemingly take a shortcut as you put it you mention it but never show it in the video also to travel from australia to south america on one of these so-called shortcut flights uh would take a strangely long time and your flight earth mall no it wouldn't take a strangely long time uh but anyway and people would realize again four years that's okay are we saying that jet engine technology is more advanced than we realize and airlines are prepared to go into the fast mode when on one of these shortcut flights are always saying that the creators can adjust the perceived time for everyone on these flights i'm saying there's something between those two points you just mentioned yeah there's something fishy going on with the southern hemisphere flights why i made clue seven and clue nine i'd be interested to hear your views and whether or not you accept the point about gps and the hookup with the land-based adsb stations no what i'm saying here is if there are 32 and i said it in the clues very clearly and that is, if there are 32, the GPS system, 32 satellites that have blanket overlapping coverage of the entire globe, then how do the plane's GPS system go into approximated or estimated mode? Why aren't they tracked constantly? Why aren't the lat and longitude lines tracked constantly all the time? And while we're on that, why not talk about the Malaysian flights? 777 plane, by the way. That was one of them. Uh, that flagship, flagship, state of the art plane goes down in the Indian Ocean. No one has any clue where it went. No, not even close. Not even close. Why did that plane go? It's because it's not being tracked. It goes into estimated mode. Hence the term estimated or approximated, which means they know approximately where it is. They just don't know exactly where it is. Get it? Kind of. Gareth, if you want to shut this thing down, please, by all means make a series of videos and put them out there it'll if it gets traction great and a whole bunch of people will leave flat earth and i can quit tomorrow four years nothing just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and i rue the day that i got into this because i didn't want to be right but then i did this one's called, Please Read. The odds of this happening are huge. Hi, Mark. I am watching you on Netflix. He hasn't even finished it yet. But I've actually been watching your YouTube channel since the spring of 2015. You made the first Flat Earth video I watched. Fast forward to this check made out to the business my hus husband and I own. Oh, yeah, right. As well as you. I was blown away. My husband believes I'm crazy, but I take it as a sign. Uh, if you share this, please do not use my name. It's crazy. I wonder what the odds are on this. Anyway, after watching the Netflix movie, I was finally compelled to look like a true nut and send it. God bless you and your beautiful Flat Earth. Yeah, again, most of the Flat Earth army is in the closet. This particular person here, I'm not going to give you her name, uh, has been watching Flat Earth for, for, since 2015. Never sent me an email. And then she watches Behind the Curve. And what had happened was at her office somebody because she works at an insurance company somebody sent her a check to for an insurance thing and it was print it was a bank check and one of the names on the check was mark Sargent, spelled exactly the same s-a-r-g-e-n-t and she saw it as a sign and so she wrote me and actually sent me she probably shouldn't have done that and i won't tell on her uh, she sent me up a uh, a photocopy of the check 
to, and it's cool. So thank you for that. Uh, very, very cool. And I, in fact, you know what? I will put this in my to-do box and I will let you know that I read it on my QA show. Thank you for that. This one's called, I'm sending you a copy of my book, Buddy. Mark, I sent a voice, bro, more personal, and I can explain better. Uh, if can confirm, post Addy. Uh, this kid must be young. Is that a thing? Like instead of address, you say Addy. Would be awesome, mate. I can't wait to you read this manual. That's Tony from WA. Oh, Western Australia. Got it. I had to look up. I had to look at his email address. Yeah, yeah, cool. Again, if you guys want to send anything to me. Uh, my the address in the description box of every single video I have is the current address, twenty four ten James Place number five zero two, Langley Washington nine eight two six zero. This one's called Flat Earth Question. Hi Mark, I do believe the seems flat. Left out a word there. He was so excited. The world seems flat. I have an idea to prove it. If you can get a hold of certain information, a commercial aircraft doing a long haul flight will usually maintain its cruising altitude for hundreds of miles on autopilot. If the Earth has a curve, the plane would have to constantly be dipping down to follow the curve to maintain its altitude. This information would be recorded. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, the curvature of the Earth, if it is ages per mile squared, and, a, and an aircraft is plane flying really, really fast, would have to either dip down or raise up depending on how you look at it. There would have to be a slight adjustment. And uh, in fact, when you look at the side radar signature of all the fact, uh, I've got it lying around, well, I think I did. It's it's out there on the, on the internet, but since my hard drive crashed, I lost quite a few reference materials, but that's okay. Um, the plane goes up and then it goes to cruising altitude and it stays just dead flat when it's flying. Everybody knows this. When uh, people can perceive motion and uh, when you're flying in a plane, you notice any change. When you go to cruising altitude, you don't move. You freaking do not move. And uh, that does not change. Anyway, uh, I spoke with an Air Force pilot friend who manually flew a fighter jet for more than 2,000 miles and maintained 15,000 feet and was traveling very fast and didn't need to constant, constantly dip down to stay at 15,000 feet. Hope this is helpful. Hope you know someone honest in the aviation business that could get you some flight data to see if this would be the case. Cheers, Stefan Turley. Yeah, and you're absolutely right. And again, the, the I've talked to several pilots. You can look up, I've got a playlist called Subject Matter Experts. And in it, there are a bunch of pilots. I, I've talked to just about everybody in the aircraft industry and uh, everybody, you know, all the different categories. And they all say the same thing. This one's called Flat Earth is Dead. Uh -huh. <laughs> Oh my God. Okay. I'm going to read this. I, you know, I'm, I'm enjoying the troll emails more now because, uh, they're just so funny because I, I'm sorry. I've heard flat earth is dead since, uh, 2015 and yet the documentary just came out. It's 2019. Uh, hello, my name is Walt Schaefer. So what are you going to do now that the flat earth is dead? Did you make an announcement? I saw you are still, still are advertising for the Mark Sargent show online and selling subscriptions. Okay. Just so you guys know, Mark Sargent show.com. That was not me. That was a guy named Joe real and, uh, from San Diego, uh, just this sleazy producer and he never paid me. And so, uh, but he's not using anything that's, that's copyright or anything. So again, I'm surprised there's actually not more Mark Sargent websites out there. Uh, please don't tell me that somehow holding on to the flat earth after the $20,000 gyro and the laser beam test. I know you must have seen behind the curve by now. Seen it? <laughs> yeah, I've seen it. Besides, it was so stupid in the first place. <laughs> now, let me apologize if that was at all insulting. Oh, I'm not insulted. I didn't mean that, that way, but you have to be so ignorant. <laughs> I love it. Not stupid. Ignorant mean, meaning lack of information to be professing the flat earth idea. You said you did lots of research. Nine months worth. I don't see how that's possible. Did you only read ideas saying it was flat? You never looked at the other side. First of all, if something is BS, you just go to the beginning and do the research about how, why, where the BS came from. And everything falls apart quite easily. Uh-huh. Uh, but if you went back to the first people and proposed the earth is round, they came up with a great test to see and find the circumference of the earth. You take the pillars and the exact same dimension and put them a thousand miles apart or so, and then look at the shadow and they cast at the exact same time. You've heard of this, right? Yeah. Pillar, uh, sticks and shadows. Yeah, I know it. Uh, and you and other flat earthers can do this all over the globe caps and verify it. They came very close to the exact size of the earth when they did it for the first time a couple of thousand years ago. Wow. 
Then why is, why is the flat earth still going? Uh, and then you have sailors for hundreds of years from every country, most with no education, common people that were not part of the system. And they knew, knew that there, there's the George Orwell quote right there. Knew. You knew how. How did you know that the earth was 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 a globe? Uh, like 100% knew that the earth was round because the first last thing you see on the ship going over the horizon is the mast. Uh-huh. Yeah, show me some footage of that nowadays. Again, I, I'm not I'm not mad at the guy. Uh, I, I was 10 years ago. I would have said the same thing. Boat goes, boats go over the horizon. Not with HD digital zoom. Not now they don't. If the earth was flat, the ship would just keep getting smaller and smaller in proportion, which it does. I don't know why you are such a conspiracy theorist in the first place. You admit to owning reading all the books. From a common sense point of view, it seems so impossible for one to even exist on the scale you were talking about. And yet, when it comes to the two obvious conspiracies in the world, you take part in them. Two? You are part of the conspiracy and you don't even know it. You should. Deep down, you know one for sure. Come on, think. What is something that is total BS that you base a lot of your life? Oh, religion? Oh, it's. He never even said it. He's saying religion. Religion is, is one of the conspiracies. I'd love to chat. Oh, pff, good luck. Here's my cell phone number. It's a Chicago phone number, but I've lived in LA since 03. I would have called you at the number, but I lost my voice yesterday. I can only whisper. I've had a cuffed up cough for a couple of weeks. Uh, hope it doesn't get worse. Actually, I do hope it gets worse. Uh, anyway, we should chat. You have a following. If you want to drop the nonsense and get onto something real, we should talk. Uh, warning, one of the conspiracies can yet get you killed. Some activists, truth tellers have been jailed, some murdered. That's from Walt. Uh, sorry, no cliffhangers, Walt. Uh, but interesting that you... Um, uh, you know what? I'm enjoying the, the, the troll. I, it's so rare that I get troll emails, but now I'm getting uh, a small percentage of them because of the documentary. Who knows why? All right, this one's called Possible Tarantino Kubrick Dot Connection. Hi, Mark. I've been listening to your show for quite some time, and I've had several things that I've wanted to email you about, but never got around to it. I'm really good dot connections. <laughs> There's some irony in there. You guys know where to look. I'm really good dot connections because I have a photographic and phonographic, if you will, memory. The latter coming from being a professional drummer for many years now. Anyway, I noticed on one Flat Earth video about a shot of Stanley Kubrick hanging out with the NASA guys, uh, one that looks like the, in the back of, of a back lot. Yeah, it was a Hollywood back lot because that's where Kubrick was at the time. Happens to look a whole lot like the, the picture from Tarantino's publishing image, A Band Apart, you know, the I iconic image from Reservoir Dogs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. Uh, although I'm usually good at connecting dots, I have nothing to offer on this one other than it being very similar from the background to a number of guys that aren't wearing suits. Anyway, I can't put together what the connection is other than both directors seem to get carte blanche on all their films, of course, until Stanley got killed for revealing too much uh, with eyes wide shut. Any thoughts? Or am I grasping at straws? It would uh, not be a first. Thanks again and keep up the good work, brother man. Cheers, mate, Rico Kohler. P.S. The survival's, Survivor's Guide would be greatly appreciated. Seriously, did I not send this to him? Oh, guys, if you want the Survival Guide, you got to put it at the beginning. Uh, and yeah, Stanley Kubrick absolutely was, was part of the Apollo program. Uh, look up some of the old stuff he did. It took him five years to make 2001 A Space Odyssey. It was released the year before Apollo 11. And uh, it was beautiful. And it, it was basically a demonstration of what can be faked in space on film. You know, how can you simulate space and film? And he did a fantastic job. And look, a lot of directors, you know, the directors are just looking for money to fund their films and they don't care where it comes from. And if the government told them, look, we'd like you to do some research for us. And if you want to use your, your research to make a movie out of it, that's fine. As long as you don't let it out of the bag that we're what we're trying to do here. And he took the money. Look, if you go up to any director and say, look, I give, give you five hundred million dollars to help me with a project and, and you can make a movie out of it, 99% of them would go for it. Uh, because you know, it, directors like anyone in the entertainment industry, they struggle so hard to get up where they are and they all say the same thing. It's like, man, if I only had the money to do this, which is why when they make a whole bunch of money, they, they create their own production houses. Anyway, Kubrick, look it up. Uh, in fact, if you, you want to have some fun, look up Room 237. In fact, you know what? I'm going to write him back and, uh, and let, him, uh, let him know. 
that room 237 is something you should probably look at. This one's called Experimental Flat Earth. And you know what? Let's, I, we, we, we may end on this one. We'll see, depending. Um, Hello, Mr. Sergeant. There is conclusive proof that the Earth rotates and is a globe. Remember that expensive gyroscope experiment? Oh, boy. You people did with the unexpectedly demonstrated rotation, Newton's laws, which we have been able to use since about 1650, have proven to hold good whenever they have been employed to predict the outcome of any experiment. I have attached a presentation I would like to discuss with any physicist or high school teachers or engineers among your fraternity. They would need a little mathematical knowledge, but the proofs are solid. The laws of Newton. The laws of Newton. Guidelines, my friend. Guidelines. Adequately cater to the concept of buoyancy and density, which is an irrefutable demonstration of the existence of gravity. I never said there wasn't gravity. Buoyancy would not exist in the absence of gravity. That is so easy to prove. Ask any marine engineer. Yeah, I agree. I would clearly uh, love to give a presentation at the next Flat Earth Conference. <laughs> no. Uh, which would be non-mathematical for the sake of the general audience and take any questions from the floor. Physics answers uh, so many questions. No, it does not. In fact, it just creates more. I can explain in simple terms the atmosphere in relation to the vacuum of space. Oh, and why they can coexist. Yeah, good luck. Best regards, Ray D. Yeah. No, you know what? I'm not going to end on that one. Let's end on a, on a happy one if we can. This one's called New Idea. Hi, Mark. Imagine four planes took off from the North Pole and flew in opposite directions exactly 90 degrees apart at speeds of 1,000 miles per hour, supposedly matching the speed of Earth's rotation. When each plane lands 12 hours later, you could not check whether the day or night reading matched that what it should be if the Earth were rotating. If even one plane was off, for example, it landed in daylight when it should be night, this is good proof the Earth is not rotating. Wondering your thoughts, Jeffrey from Thailand. E e no, because you're making an assumption about the sun and the moon, which is not correct. And honestly, we don't even know exactly how the sun and the moon work, uh, only that they're very, very small. Let's try this one. How about uh, ISS? Mark, what are your thoughts on the International Space Station and those people who have lived there and seen the globe and curve? That's from Matt Pittman. This is a great one to end on. The ISS. Okay, does the ISS exist? Is there an object flying around up there? And when they say the ISS is passing over you, can you look up in the sky with some sort of telescope or binoculars or night vision binoculars? Can you see something? Yes, you can. Are there people living in it? No, there are not. Uh, and this is an old thing. This is old hat for, for flat earthers. But again, look up the, the interior production that has been done on the ISS. Look up stuff like ISS hairspray. Look up ISS green screen. screen. Look at ISS harnesses. There are so many things that are wrong. Production value. Again, if you were shooting this from a Hollywood standpoint, you would fire the assistant director by now because they make mistakes time and time and time again. And yeah, so for me, the ISS is a fabrication from beginning to end. Does that mean that you're not seeing something in the sky? No, of course you're seeing something in the sky. No question. But there's just nobody living on it. Uh, look at all look at all the interior shots carefully and look at the flat earth versions of them. It's pretty clear. All right. You know what? Let's wrap it up. I, there's so many emails. Again, I'm, I'm starting to lose ground again and this is getting bad. But that's okay. I will do what I can as long as I have time and you know, putting them out there at least lets people know that I'm, I'm trying to answer, answer the correspondence as fast as I can. You can send your emails to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. And until next time, stay flat.